Hi, my name is Yannick Tremblay. I'm a private ice hockey coach. I do private and semi-private sessions with players ranging from the NHL to youth hockey. The reason why I make this video today is because uh, first I, I was challenged by a friend of mine to try to explain uh, simply what I, uh, what I do on the ice in a private session. Um, uh, but then it got me thinking that um, I really do believe that uh, everybody who helps out a player in his development should should know uh, as much as possible about uh, the other aspects of his uh, development. So, um, so by sharing uh, some of the things that I've been able to learn and to ob observe uh, by doing uh, private uh, private coaching with the players, uh, I think it can help out. Um, strength coaches and, and skills coaches and power skating coaches and um, in this way um, be even more effective in their own expertise in helping out the player getting better. The main, uh, the main focus I have is to help the player be more effective in his game uh, through better movement efficiency. Um, if you can't get to a spot on the ice or you can't, you, you can't, um, you know, combine two, two elements of your game, then you're, you're kind of stuck into a pattern and limited by, uh, by some of your skill set. And by working on efficiency, then you kind of unlocked uh, more of your, your tools than you, you acquire by uh, skills practice and power skating practice and strengths. And um, so I'm really looking to to find what is the main limiting factor. And the way I do this is um, pretty much like reverse engineering. For the first time I, I work with a player, I, uh, I can, I've can i watched tapes and I talk to uh, agents and coaches and, um, and parents and, and, you know, strength coaches and, and, and the player himself. I, I do a high level overview of what I think uh, is um, is uh, can contribute to my understanding of how the player uh, player moves and how his skills interact with each other. And so the first time I see him, though, the player is already a functional player. He, you know, players in the NHL are in the best league in the world. They know how to skate. They know how to 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 shoot, and they know how to pass a puck. Uh, so it's not like there is some major flaw in in what they're doing. Um, it's it's uh, probably completely the opposite. Uh, they they are optimized to play the way they play, and they want to improve on something that is really specific. Um, I'd say that most of the time they want to be faster in their game. So understanding the connections that uh, are there between the different skill set and how they contribute or they they limit the other skills. Uh, is really important. So in a nutshell, everything is connected to everything else. Uh, so what a player can do is connected to what he can uh, in the other areas of his game, what he can already do and, and what he can't do, what he's limited by. Um, so a real easy example to illustrate this is the same player can use different ways of skating. So you can use quickness with really quick short strides and in a, a more vertical stance, or depending on the situation, you could use uh, longer strides like, like a speed skater type stride where you have a full push, full recovery, and uh, your angle towards the ice is, is, is a lot more leaned forward. Um, but uh, it, it's not to say that one is better than the other. For sure, one should be used over the other uh, in, in, uh, in different situations. But um, the main thing I'm looking for is how does it affect the stick handling? And for sure, <clears throat> if you take those two situations, the player is not going to be able to stick handle the puck exactly the same way, do the same moves, have the same options. Um, in the two situations is stick, handle stick handling, uh, skills are limited differently for the different postures and the different ways of skating. Uh, the opposite is also true. Uh, if you take the stick handling, uh, the puck position in the stick handling or the amplitude of the movement, then it's going to allow some type of skating and limit some types of skating. The player is not going to be able to skate any which way with any kinds of moves that he makes with the puck. So. 
every time that he makes a move with the puck, he's going to be limiting himself in another area of his game. Some of the aspects that I am paying attention to are um, uh, physical, neurological, and, and uh, proprioception. Uh, for me, I, maybe I use the term uh, wrongly, but um, for me, it's, this is the easiest part to, to uh, notice. If a player has never done a, a, an exercise or, or a move on the ice, um, for sure he's going to struggle in the first few reps he's going to do them. But uh, right away, if the prerequisites are there, so physical or neurological, and um, he's going to be able to change his, his uh, uh, movement right away. He's going to be able to readjust really quickly. So... Um, that's the first thing I, I, I look for, then physical, then neurological. Uh, physical is, you know, stability, uh, strength, weaknesses, um, mobility, um, and, and the amplitude, asymmetries. Uh, this is a big one. Uh, just to know about them, uh, I don't know exactly what uh, a player would have to do this is you know the physical trainers and athletic trainers tr strength coaches uh, area of expertise uh, but I can notice when uh, for sure the effect it has on technique and on posture and on the capacity to to move on the ice um, then neurological is you know I'm looking for uh, if patterns are repeating from exercise to exercise, and, and I believe, I, I don't see a major physical uh, clue as to, you know, weaknesses or, or limitations, then uh, uh, the neurological part of it comes into play. So perception of balance, uh, visual field, uh, the quality of the information that the player gets, um, sometimes there's blind spots that the players have and they have to kind of modify the way they stand and, and turn and, and, and rotate their heads or their whole body in order to compensate. So uh, you can see those things uh, if, you, if, if you look for uh, those connections. At the same time, as a disclaimer, I'm not an expert in the neurological part of it, but if I can notice it, if I can help his job in helping the player uh, by providing the information that um, uh, what, I, what I believe is relevant on the ice and can help him uh, do, do his job more efficiently, then, then I think it's all to the benefit of the player. So it's really important for me to understand enough of that field or enough of the connections between that field and technique and posture and and the on ice result to be able to carry that in to to send the information the right information his way uh, same thing with uh, strength coaches or physical trainers um, if i if i see something that i believe is connected to the physical capacity of a player and that he can improve that he will improve uh, a lot of his um, connections with the, the, the skills that he has on the ice, then it's really important for me to, to have uh, that, uh, that line of communication with these experts. And my job is, is kind of to, um, to figure out what those connections are and, and, to, uh, and to identify the ones that are uh, causing the most uh, the most constraints, the most uh, limitations. So that's it for this video. Hopefully there, there is some valuable information for you to help your own players. Um, in future videos, I'll be using footage of actual drills that I use and methods and techniques that I use and, and try to pinpoint some of those uh, connections that I see. Uh, thank you and uh, see you next time.